And I've been asked to explain the neuroscience of navigation in 10 minutes, so this is going to be a challenge, <laughs> but I'm, I'm up to it. Um, so the, um, the basic story of this is that we have been kind of interested in how the brain represents the outside world. And we've been trying to understand how you, know, you can make a, something like a map, for example, using neurons, which are the brain cells that are somehow you know, um, talking to each other and creating an internal representation of the world. And it's just an amazing scientific question, how, how does this work? And um, in the course of trying to answer that, we've, we've kind of discovered a few fundamental principles that we think evolved a long time ago. So we study rats and mice, and, and the last common ancestor of rats and mice and humans was like... Um, 200 million years ago or some, something like that. So these are circuits that we're pretty sure are the same in rats and mice and ourselves, evolved a long time ago and they're very fundamental. And so what I want to do is quickly um, talk you through some of the um, major findings that have come out of our work in the last few decades. So one of the, one of the um, main take-home messages, if you like, is that uh, there's more than one kind of spatial behaviour. So when you're making your way through a city, there's, there's different ways that you can do it. So one thing that you could do is to be operating on autopilot and following a, a habitual and very familiar route where you're not really thinking about where you're going. Um, it's, it's your legs know where they're going, but you're not having to think about it. So um, that kind of habit-based navigation is quite common in a very familiar and, and very re um, repetitively executed route. And it's controlled by a brain system called the striatum, whose job is to take the things that the brain has learned about the relationships between things in the outside world and, and behaviour, and to kind of hardwire that so that you don't need to think about it, you can just execute that. And um, a lot of commuters are operating using this habit-based system, for example. They're not really, they're not following signs, they're not paying attention to where they are. But mixed in with all of the commuters, there will be people who've not been to that environment before, don't know where they're going, are having to think about it and um, they're not on autopilot. So you're, you've got uh, two completely different kinds of um, people who are trying to use the same space, and that's something that I think that designers aren't <coughs> necessarily always aware of. So you can use your habit system when you're navigating a very familiar route like the one on the left, but if you encounter something that disrupts you, so for example you're trying to get to work and suddenly there's roadworks, then you have to stop and uh, call to mind a ma mental map of the layout of the environment so that you can plan um, a detour or, um, or something like that. And that turns out to be dependent on a very different brain system called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus was discovered in the 60s and 70s to be the seat of um, our memory system. So it's the part of the brain that is responsible for orchestrating and collating and uh, storing and, and, and kind of um, indexing our memories. But it's also the seat of our map of space. So it turns out that even rats, um, nature has seen fit to, to make our memory system dependent on a map. So that's how the brain organizes um, things. So that's been a tremendously important discovery. So the, the type of work that I do is to study the activity of single neurons. And the reason for this is this very important discovery that was made by John O'Keefe at UCL many years ago. So I was a postdoc with John O'Keefe, and I went to his lab to learn um, about this discovery that he had made. So what he had been doing is, is recording single neurons from the hippocampus to try, and, and actually at the time he was interested in trying to understand its memory function. But what he found was that if you take the nerve impulses, which is um, what you can see on that little oscilloscope trace, and, um, and correlate them with where the rat was at the time, you find that a given neuron will produce all of its nerve impulses when the rat is in a particular region of space. So in this picture, the rat was walking around this square, square kind of um, platform. And every time it went into the southeast corner of that platform, this particular cell suddenly started becoming active. And you can see the little red squares where all of its um, nerve impulses were produced. And O'Keefe studied quite a few of these neurons, and he found that different neurons had different places where they would be active. And he concluded that the hippocampus is a map of space. Um, and so he called these cells place cells, and they turn out to be really fundamental for understanding how we represent space and how we organize our memories. People have tried to find place cells in humans as well, and we do um, have place cells. So there's a subset of patients with epilepsy have electrodes implanted into the brain so that we can study the nerve impulses. And when they explore a virtual reality environment, we see those same hotspots of activity where, so in, in this case, they were um, exploring a, this very, very simple grid-like city. They were pretending to be taxi drivers. And you can see on the right is the sort of um, hot heat map of where the cells were active and you can see that there are hot spots. So we're pretty sure that place cells are a thing that humans have as well as rats. 
We also know now that the hippocampus is important not just for mapping where you've been, but also for imagining the future. So imagining um, places you've never been, um, but might go. And really, we think that this structure is trying to create an internal picture of the world. So it's a very remarkable um, system. So something else that we've kind of uncovered in the process of trying to understand the place cells is that there's um, a set of brain regions near the hippocampus called the head direction system. And the neurons here are interested in which way you're facing. And different neurons will um, come active when the animal, or we assume the human, faces in different directions. And we think that these head direction cells are the way that the place cells are able to organize uh, where they position their firing. So they're really fundamental to making a map of space. Without a good sense of direction, you're unable to form a good map. And we think that that is a critical insight for understanding how people are mapping cities as they're walking around, because we tend not to design with the sense of direction in mind. We give people information about place. We say sort of, you are here with signs. And we give information about movements, like you should go that way if you want to find the exit. But we don't provide information that enables the sense of direction to become active and coherent across different environments. And so we don't make it easy for people to form a mental map of the space that they're walking through. And there's sort of evidence now, a reason to think, because, because the hippocampus is very connected to the emotional centers of the brain, there's, there's reason to think that if you're not forming a mental map, you're not becoming comfortable and feeling safe in that environment. And if you're making people um, follow you know, networks of signs without really understanding where they are, they're always going to have this um, feeling of disconnectedness and lack of comfort um, and lack of a sense of ownership of the space. And so my feeling from the work that we've been doing is that the thing that people need to put back into their designing is how to help people create a coherent sense of direction as they're moving through space. So that wherever they are, they kind of know how all the spaces connect, they know how that they're all oriented, and they feel that these places are linked, and they feel that they know where they are. Um, so I think my 10 minutes is probably up, so I'll stop there. Thank you.